Hey, this is your boy C. Will back to you with another video. And man, I was able to spend a little bit over 30 days with the Alienware Aurora R7. And man, I love this system. Um, but there are definitely some things that, you know, to start off with that I did not like and some upgrades that I made along the way. And man, I absolutely love the system now. It works exactly how I wanted it to work. But before we get into the video, definitely take a look at our Patreon page. If you want to support the channel, if you want to definitely uh, have us continue to do exactly what we do, um, definitely check that out. Um, but also, don't forget to follow me on all forms of social media. And uh, when you get a chance, if you love what we do, um, definitely like the channel, subscribe, hit the bell so you can be able to receive all the notifications for my uploads. And let's get into the video. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is a real quick rundown of the specs of the Alienware Aurora R7. And uh, of course, it comes with Windows 10, 64-bit uh, home edition, the Intel Core i7-8700, a 1TB uh, 7200 RPM hard drive, 16 gigabytes worth of Intel Optane memory, Bluetooth 4.2, I believe, 7.1 uh, surround sound for the audio chip that's in here. It comes with the DVD burner, which you don't see a lot these days. <laughs> uh, it has six USB 2.0 ports, killer AC Wi-Fi, that's gigabit Wi-Fi, and also uh, gigabit Ethernet. The graphics card in this unit is a NVIDIA GT. X 1070, which is a great graphics card for this unit. And last but not least, it comes with 16 gigabytes with the DDR4 memory, expendable up to 64 gigs. And so the monitor that you see behind me, um, I bought this to go along with my computer. It's an Acer, and the model of the Acer is the ET322QU. It's a 32 inch uh, 75 hertz monitor. Uh, the resolution on the monitor is 2560 by 1440. Has a great resolution. I got it for a great price um, from Micro Center. I think I actually got it for about right at $200. It's a great price. And for the Alienware World R7, I actually got it from Best Buy uh, for $12.49. It was a great price. Um, I know recently the price went back up to around about $14.99. And I just looked today and um, I'll put a link in the description below um, if you still want to just take a look at this particular unit. And now, so what I want to talk about first is the dislikes because um, my likes outweigh the dislikes. So I'll talk about the dislikes first. Uh, number one, the Intel Optane memory. Um, man, I understand what Intel is trying to do with trying to speed up an old hard drive. That's basically what the Intel Optane memory is for, is trying to speed up old hard drive to have SSD-like speeds. Um, but for me, after experiencing this for 30 days, um, I made the decision to go ahead and take out the Intel Optane memory. and. I actually picked up the Samsung 970 Evo NVMe M.2 drive, uh, 500 gigabytes, and I made that my uh, boot drive and my main operating system drive. And uh, man, it's a world of a difference. Um, it's a huge difference in between speed, in between the responsiveness of my system. You should see a link at the top of the screen. Um, if you haven't already, check out uh, the video that I created about installing the 970 EVO into my system here. And uh, man, uh, it's just a, <laughs> it's a good video to go see. Uh, definitely some fun things happening in that. Um, but man, um, so number one definitely was the Intel Altair memory. And one of the other things that I ran into, uh, one of the problems was with, I, I believe it was maybe, uh, I'm thinking there was some sort of type of driver issue with the Intel rapid storage uh, drivers, which was running the Intel Optane memory. Um, but I had issues from when the computer, every time the computer went to sleep and it woke back up and getting ready for me to use the system, it would just hang, it would freeze. And I couldn't figure out, you know, what was going on. Um, didn't know what was happening. So I turned the sleep mode off on my computer while I was trying to research online. I seen some other people was having some of the same issues. Um, another issue that I had also with uh, the Intel Optane memory was, you know, if I unplug the computer system, unplug the power from the computer system, um, and then plug it back up and boot the system back up, you'll see a picture, you're going to see this pop up on the screen, but, you know, I had no idea why this was happening, <laughs> as you can see on the screen, um, and it was basically acting like I cut the computer off and it was trying to rebuild the cache on the actual hard drive and some weird stuff was happening. Um, so that was one of the, you know, a couple of reasons why I got rid of the Intel Optane memory um, and replaced, you know, the only M.2 slot on the computer system with the Samsung 970 Evo. My system is like 10 times better ever since I've done that. 
uh, no issues with waking up, you know, from sleep mode or anything like that. So glad about that. Now, problem number two uh, was definitely, it was something that was going wrong with the Alienware command center. Inside the actual command center, as you can see up on the screen, um, you could be able to control the lights on the system, um, you know, the RGB lights uh, on the power, on the side and also on the other side of the computer system you could control and, you, and it will also give you pretty much vitals of like the cpu temperature uh the fan speeds and all that good stuff well for some particular reason what was happening uh just like kind of like out of the blue um i was getting a cpu uh pump failure uh, sign in place of where the fan speed uh for the cpu and and for some particular reason, I you know I don't know why that started happening. I looked on the Dell forums and um, I seen a bunch of people was having some of the same issues. They said that it was pretty much just a uh, kind of like a driver software issue with the command center. So after uninstalling the command center and reinstalling with the newest um, software that's out now, I no longer have those issues. Um, so that's just kind of some of the hiccups um, that I ran into with that. Um, there was, you know, with this particular system, um, it's water cooled, so the uh, CPU fan always shows that the maximum speed is at 100%. Um, but I knew there was nothing wrong with the system after reading on some of the forms on Dell's website. Um, I just knew it was some sort of type of software issue. It almost uh, got me to the point where taking the system back. But I said, well, hey, if it's just a software issue, I'm pretty sure they'll come out with a fix for it, and that's what happened. Um, but uh, from there, um, I, have, I haven't had any of the issues with the computer. Everything has been kind of blazing fast from there on. Um, so that's all of my dislikes. Now, getting into the actual likes of the system. This system is super fast, especially with the, the six core 12 thread i7, core i7 8700. Um, it's super fast. The base speed is like 3.2 gigahertz, but it gets all up into a 4.3 gigahertz. Uh, matching that with the Samsung 970 uh, Evo, everything is blazing fast from installing programs to running games i use the adobe creative cloud suite a lot uh, from photoshop to uh, the media encoder to um, adobe premiere pro to after effects i use all those different programs even uh, illustrated and they run seamlessly they load up in seconds the system here chumps through it um, and so you're definitely also um, later on in the video you'll see me go through um, a couple of games fortnite uh, Warframe and I'll show you kind of like how it looks how it runs on the system the frames per second and all that good stuff um, But definitely uh, the system, you know, it runs. I love the lighting that's on the system itself. It runs quiet um, I rarely hear any of the fans uh, with it being liquid cooled that also helps uh, with the CPU and stuff like that um, And man, I you know, what can I say the system does what it does? Okay, and one of the things I also love about the system um, the number of USB ports, um, we have six USB ports on uh, 2.0. Um, and I think we have about one, two, three, plus, and it's seven 3.1 USB ports. Um, it's on the system. And it also comes with two USB-C uh, ports. Um, and so I just love the inputs and outputs. Um, I use them on a daily basis. Um, you have the ones up here on the front. It's a three uh, 3.1 USB ports up here, USB-C port. You have um, a mic port up here up the top as well. And then you also have a uh, headphone jack up here on, uh, on the front as well. And you have the same um, inputs uh, on the back, along with on the GTS 107 graphics card, it comes to three uh, display ports and one HDMI ports. Um, and on this particular monitor, again, I, I told you, this monitor comes with a uh, free sync, but you really can't really use that with the Nvidia graphics card. Um, but I, you know, with it running at 75 hertz, um, it definitely, uh, you know, the gameplay is buttery smooth. Um, but the best way to be able to get the um, get it to run at the 75 hertz is using the actual display port instead of the H HDMI port. Um, so I love how that matches up. Um, in the future, I'm definitely going to get some more monitors to use uh, that you know to be able to game and also um, do some multitasking on some other stuff at the same time. But the 32 inch does a great job uh, with doing that and, and again um, if you like I definitely put a link in the description below uh, you may still be able to pick that up from Micro Center as well using the system as you can see on the screen uh, man Fortnite runs um, uh, actually I love playing this game it runs smooth 
um, having the screen, having the GTS 1070, you can pretty much run any game um, at ultra high settings, um, 1080p. I was re I'm running Fortnite right now. So, you know, just taking a look, kind of moving on from that, taking a look at Warframe. I love this game. Both of these games are free, um, but I love playing both of these games, especially with Warframe. Uh, the graphics are really good for a game that's free. Um, being able to move around open, open area, um, and you got a lot of things that's going on. Um, definitely on this particular game, I don't have the frames per second up on the actual screen. Um, but again, um, it has the GTS 1070 and this particular system has no problems running that. Okay, some of the games I'm going to be streaming in the future um, and also putting up on YouTube is Battlefield 5, uh, definitely Fallout 76, uh, Soul Calibur, um, GTA 5, and, and I'm definitely waiting on the next GTA to come out. Um, and so some of the you know, your top of the line games, oh, and um, Call of Duty Black Ops 4, uh, definitely you'll be seeing those from me pretty soon. Um, and definitely, you know, you can be able to see how they play on the system. All right, guys, so what we're gonna do here, we have the um, siding and the case open on the Aurora R7. And if you haven't had a chance to take a look at um, my install video of the uh, Samsung 970 Evo, um, I kind of went through kind of like the ins and outs of the system, but a couple of things I just want to update here on, on my previous video. I did go the actual long way uh, with uh, kind of uh, swinging out uh, the hinge and I was unscrewing a bunch of things, but just <laughs> so you know, I'm just going to go back through a couple of things here. Uh, as you can see down here at the bottom, uh, we have the 2.5 inch base. Uh, for your hard drives uh, that you'll be able to put in currently right now um, in this particular bay I have a SATA 3 uh, Samsung Evo 860 uh, and then up at the top here this is the one terabyte uh, Toshiba hard drive that came with the system um, and then let's see if I could just move up a little bit closer here this is the actual bracket to keep the uh, GTX 1070 uh, graphics card in place um, but actually, all you have to do, um, you don't have to change anything here. You don't have to unscrew this or move anything here. All you have to do um, is just take this and you can swing it open. And this actually opens all the way up so you can be able to access the insides of the system. And as you can see here, here is the water cooler for the CPU, for the processor. We have the two sticks of DDR4 memory. Uh, 16 gigabytes total the GTX 1070 graphics card and right up under the graphics card and I don't know I might be able to zoom in just a little bit here but as you can see here that is the up under the graphics card that's the uh, 970 Evo that's an M.2 uh, slot where I swapped out the Intel Optane memory uh, that was located there and so guys, this is just a quick overview about the inside of the system. Um, you definitely have two more slots available um, for DDR4 memory. And again, I'm thinking about adding an additional either 32 gigabytes or just changing out everything and maxing out at 64 gigs, uh, which definitely helps for uh, video editing, 4K video editing, things of that nature. All right. I did some upgrades to my system. So what you're gonna see next is actually the one is the 970 Evo, um, the 860 Evo. So let's just get into that real quick. Okay, so the first benchmark that we're gonna take a look at is just a regular hard drive, one terabyte hard drive, 7200 RPM. Um, you're gonna take a look at that benchmark first. And as you can see, it's pretty slow. <laughs> the next benchmark that you're gonna see now is the Samsung 860 Evo. This is the SATA version. And as you can see, it's a big difference between the regular SSD uh, SATA version versus the one terabyte hard drive. And as you can see, you can see a bigger difference in the next benchmark that's popping up on the screen is the Samsung Evo 970. And man, it kind of blows everything else out the water. Uh, but those are the three hard drives that I have in the system right now. Thank you guys for watching the video all the way through. I hope you was able to get some great information about what I was able to show you. And uh, man, like I said, I definitely love the system. 
Um, I definitely love some of the upgrades that I have made so far, but definitely stay tuned to the future um, because I am, the, I think the next big upgrade I'm gonna make to the system uh, will be um, increasing the actual uh, memory capacity I have. Thinking about going up to a, an additional 32 gigs worth of memory, or I may just max it out at 64 gigs, so I'm not sure yet, um, but definitely stay tuned to that upload because I will upload that video and installation of that. And, um, and also, you know, I got a plethora of things that's going to be coming down the pipeline for this system. Um, but hey, you know, like I said, I hope you was able to make a decision about what it is that you want to get. Um, and definitely uh, just hit me down in the comments about what you choose to do. But definitely just look for uploads from me every Wednesday of the week. Um, I'm definitely dedicated to doing that. And I'll see you in the next video.